When 55 years had passed after Lehi left Jerusalem, Nephi commanded me, Jacob, to write on these small plates only a few of the things I considered most precious. I knew that the sacred matters were what I should record for the sake of Jesus Christ, our people, and the kingdom that would come. We had many revelations and prophecies, and we knew about the Lord and His ways, so we worked hard among our people to come to Jesus and accept His goodness and blessings, so that Jesus would not finally turn them away from His presence, as He had done to some when the children of Israel were in the wilderness. We wanted all men to believe in Christ. So I, Jacob, will obey Nephi's commandment. Nephi was getting old and knew that he must die. So he anointed a man to be a king and a ruler over his people, according to the reigns of kings. The people loved Nephi deeply because he had protected them and worked hard for them. They wanted to remember his name, so the kings were to be called Second Nephi, Third Nephi, and so on, no matter what their own names were. Then Nephi died. The people who were not Lamanites were Nephites. Although they were called Nephites, Jacobites, Josephites, Zoramites, Lamanites, Lemuelites, and Ishmaelites, but I, Jacob, will hereafter call the people Lamanites who tried to destroy the Nephites. And I will call Nephites those people who are friendly to Nephi. Under the second king, the Nephites hardened their hearts and began to be wicked, like David and Solomon of old, who improperly wanted wives and concubines. They searched for gold and silver and began to be proud of themselves. I, Jacob, tried to teach them the gospel, for my brother Joseph and I had been consecrated priests and teachers of this people by the hand of Nephi. We magnified our office unto the Lord, for we were willing to be responsible for the sins of the people if we did not try hard to teach them the word of God. I said to the people in the temple, I am deeply worried about you. I know what you are thinking. Until now you have obeyed the Lord, but you begin to love sin and wickedness. When I pray to the Lord, I find it hard to face him because wickedness is in your hearts. I am sorry that I must speak so boldly to you before your wives and children, many of whom are choice, exceedingly moral, and beautiful in the sight of God. They have come to hear the healing sweetness of the gospel. But I know that I must admonish you for your crimes, and my words are like daggers in the souls of the innocent. Many of you have begun to search for gold and silver and precious ores. In this wonderful land you have received many riches, but some of you have more than others, and so you think that you are better than they, and your hearts are filled with pride, and you wear fine clothing to show what you think you are. My brethren, you are not following the word of God, and his judgment will come against you if you do not repent. If he wished, he could strike you down instantly. Seek the kingdom of God. If you do, your riches will have meaning, for you will then clothe the naked, feed the hungry, relieve the sick, and administer good to the children of God. You must know how God who created you feels about your sins. You should glorify him through righteousness. But you are guilty of a worse crime. The Lord says that as you become more wicked, you try to find excuse in the scriptures for your immorality. 
that David and Solomon had many women for selfish purposes was wicked in the sight of God. So do not use them for an excuse. Each man will have but one wife and no concubines. If this people do not obey his commandments about chastity, he will curse the land. I, Jacob, say to the pure in heart among you, that if you lift up your heads and receive the word of God with firmness of mind, you will feast on his love forever. But you who are not pure in heart will be punished by the Lamanites. The Lamanites are more righteous than you, for they remember the commandment of the Lord that they should have but one wife and no concubines, and that they should continue to be an obedient people. So the Lord will not destroy them, but will be merciful to them, and one day they will become a blessed people. They have love in their families. They hate you because of their fathers. They are better than you in the eyes of the Creator. If you do not repent, he will put a greater curse on you. Do not become angels of Satan to be thrown into a lake of fire and brimstone, which is the second death. But I, Jacob, cannot write upon these plates, which Nephi made and are called the plates of Jacob, a hundredth part of what was happening to this people. On the larger plates, however, are records of their wars, their contentions, and the reigns of their kings. I recorded on the plates only those things of eternal value about us. And for this reason, we rejoice. Engraving the plates is difficult. So we pray that our children will put great value on them. They will learn about their first parents. We want them to know that we knew of Christ many hundreds of years before his coming. We, as do the Hebrew prophets, have hope of his glory. This is why we search through the writings of the prophets and why we have revelations and the spirit of prophecy. We therefore gain such a strong faith that we can command in the name of Jesus the very trees to obey us, or the mountains, or the waves of the sea. Abraham's offering of Isaac, for example, was like that of God offering up Jesus. This is why we keep the law of Moses. The works of the Lord are great and marvelous, and no man can fully know his ways. He created the earth by the power of his word, and so through his word he can do what is his will and pleasure at any time in its history. So, my brethren, do not counsel the Lord. Take counsel from him. He will do right and wise things with great mercy. Listen to his words, and you will be resurrected and see him in the flesh. My brethren, do not marvel at what I say, but take it upon yourselves to learn about the resurrection and the world to come. The Spirit speaks the truth plainly, and we learn the truth through the faith that is in us. But the Jews closed their minds, and so God took his plainness away from them. They therefore rejected the only truth they can build on. Let me tell you more about it. Zenos wrote that the house of Israel was like a tame olive tree that became decayed with age. To save it, the master of the vineyard watered and fertilized it and hoed the earth around it. After a season, some new tender branches began to grow, but the top began to die. He told his servant to cut the young tender branches away from the tame tree and to graft them into distant wild olive trees. Then he was to cut away the dead top branches on the tame tree and burn them. Some branches were to be cut from the wild olive trees and grafted into the tame tree to fill in where the young tender branches and dead top branches had been cut away. When all the fruit was ripe, the master saw that some of it was good, 
but that some was wild. So the branches that produced the wild fruit were about to be cut away when the servant received permission to cultivate all the fruit of the vineyard to see if all could be saved. At first, the wild branches that had been grafted into the tame tree gave good fruit, but finally produced bad fruit. Then the master said that even though the roots were still good, a tree that produces bad fruit must be destroyed. The master and the servant then went down to the lowest and farthest part of the vineyard. They saw that all the young natural branches had also become bad, that even the last which was most choice had withered and died. The master wept because he had done all he could to save his vineyard. Because he had not destroyed the wild branches, they overcame the good ones. Even the roots of the tame and wild trees were ruined because the wild branches grew so fast and took strength to themselves. The master wanted to destroy all the trees. But the servant asked the master to spare the trees a little longer. Then the master told the servant to take the natural branches and to graft them into the tame tree from which they came and to destroy the wild ones. In this way he hoped to save the roots of the tame tree and once more get good fruit, which was most precious to him, before the end of the season which was coming soon. All the master's servants worked carefully to save all they could, for they knew that beyond what they were doing nothing could be done and the master himself worked with them. Later, natural fruit grew and thrived in the vineyard, and the wild branches were thrown away according to the growing strength of the root. Soon, all the wild branches had been destroyed. The master had saved the vineyard and the natural fruit, and all was as it had been in the beginning. He told his servants, who had obeyed his commandments, that they could have joy with him because of the good fruit. Then he said that if bad fruit should again come into the vineyard, he would gather both the good and bad fruit, throw the bad away, and burn the vineyard. And this is what Zenos spoke. I, Jacob, have told you this story because the vineyard is like the house of Israel. There is a last time that the Lord will reach out to save his people and it will be through his servants, his missionaries, that the good people of the world will be saved, no matter where they have gone and no matter what their circumstances might be. They will be saved by being grafted into the tree, which is the house of Israel from which they came. Do you see how merciful the Lord is? You can be saved from the fire if you obey him, so, my brethren, repent and love the Lord while he offers his mercy. Do not reject my words, for if you do, you will deny him. Seek eternal life. After several years, a man named Sherem came among the Nephites. He had a perfect knowledge of the language of the people and he used it in trying to make me lose my testimony. He said, Jacob, you preach what you call the gospel of Jesus Christ. You turn the people away from God, and they do not keep the law of Moses. You talk about this Christ who you say will come many hundreds of years from now. This is blasphemy. No one knows such things. But I confounded Sherem by the Spirit of the Lord, I said, Do you deny the Christ who shall come? He said, There is no Christ. I replied, You do not understand the scriptures in which you say you believe. They testify of Christ. All the prophets speak of him. I myself have seen him by the power of the Holy Ghost, Without his atonement, all mankind would be lost. I said to him, Why should I tempt God give you a sign about what you know is true? You would deny it anyway because you are of the devil. It is not my will, but if God should strike you 
Let that be your sign that God has power in heaven and on earth and that Christ will come. Let it be the will of the Lord that will come to pass. After I said this to Sherem, the power of the Lord came upon him and he fell to the earth. He was so weak after that that he had to be fed for several days. Then he said to the people, Come to me tomorrow, for I want to speak to you before I die. They came, and Sherem denied what he had taught them and bore his testimony about the divinity of Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost and the ministering of angels he spoke of the reality of heaven and hell and of eternity and the punishment of the Lord. He said, I am afraid because I may have committed the impardonable sin because I have lied to God and have denied the Christ. I said that I believed the scriptures, but I did not, for they testify of Jesus. I fear that I shall not be saved, so I confess my sins to God. Then Sherem died. When the people saw Sherem die, they saw how powerful God is. They were so amazed that they fell to earth. God had answered my prayer. After this event, peace and the love of God came again to the people. They forgot Sherem's sinful teachings and searched the scriptures for the truth. We learned how to preach the gospel to the Lamanites, but we failed because they liked to fight and to shed blood. They hated us who were their brothers and wanted to kill us. The Nephites defended themselves successfully against the Lamanites because they trusted in God as the rock of their salvation. I, Jacob, began to be old. But I want to say that because of our troubles and because of our loneliness and solemnity, our lives passed away like a dream. We were hated by our brethren and we had to fight them. This is why we mourned all our days because I knew I was dying. I gave these plates to my son, Enos. I told him what Nephi, my brother, commanded me, and he also promised to obey. My brethren, 